All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with more solving backwards using normal distribution. This is actually part three. In this video, I'm going to solve for an unknown value of standard deviation. Just a quick refresher in case you've been hitting the head since my last video. We still have a normal curve with 50% of the data falling above the mean, 50% of the data falling below the mean. We still noted that a z-score is nothing more than the location of a value of x on the curve expressed in standard deviations. And I'm still using my magic formula of x equals mu plus z times the standard deviation. So what are we going to solve for this time? Well, Wanda's widgets is still making high-quality dog widgets for distribution worldwide. Her recent salary survey indicated that the average worker at Wanda um, owes, earns rather $1,000 per week. We also know that approximately 2% make less than $800 per week. So what's the value of the standard deviation for the employee's salary? Well, it's not that hard to find out. Because first thing we're going to do is determine the value that we're solving for, which in this case is sigma, standard deviation. We are then going to calculate the area under the curve using the power of 50% above and 50% below the mean. We are then going to delve into the guts of the normal distribution table to locate the area associated with a given z-score. And then we are going to apply the magic formula to solve for this unknown value of a standard deviation. So this is what my curve looks like when I translate that problem into a picture. I know I was given that the mean or average salary of the workers is $1,000 per week. We were told that 2% of the employees earn less than $800. That allows me to locate this value of X on the curve. And since I know only 2% earn less than $800, it has to go into this lower tail of the curve. So remember I told you that the second step of my process is to locate the area under the curve. If I know that 2% falls here, I know that this entire side of the curve here is 50%. So when I subtract 50% minus 2%, I get 0 0.4800. So I now know that I'm looking for the z-score associated with 48% of the data falling between my value of x, 800, and my mean of 1,000. So here I am with my amazing normal distribution table. Remember, I'm looking for 0 .4800, or as close as I can get. So I'm looking through, and I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I'm thinking 0 .4798 is what I'm going with because 0 0.4803 is 0 0.0003 over, and 47.98 is only 0 0.0002 under. So the winner is 0 0.4798, which has a z-score associated with it of 2. 0, 5. So this is, this was my point oh five column up here. So now I know that I have a z-score equal to 2.05. But wait, it was located to the left of the mean. So what do I know about that? Is it is a negative 2.05. 0, 0.05 because all z scores that fall to the left of the mean are negative values. 
So here I am back with my magic formula. So let's figure out what did I know. Well, I was told that X was equal to $800. I knew that the mean of the distribution was $1,000. I knew that the Z-score associated with 48% of the data was 2.05 negative since it was on the left hand side and what I didn't know was this value for sigma. So I'm simply going to take this formula and I'm going to say that 800 is equal to the mean of 1000 plus a negative 2.05 times the value of the standard deviation of one, I mean the um, unknown, all right, I had a, uh, evidently had a small um, issue right there, sorry, plus times my unknown value of the standard deviation. I'm back with you, I'm back with you. So now I'm going to solve this as a, as a fundamental algebra problem. I'm going to subtract 1,000 from both sides. I'm going to end up with a negative 200 equals a negative 2.05 standard deviations. I'm going to multiply everything by a pot negative 1 to get rid of those because negatives aren't my friend. I'm going to take 200 I'm going to divide it by 2.05 equals sigma. I'm running out of room. I'm coming back up here because I wrote too fat. And when I do this math down here, I come up with sigma equal to $97.50. Mm, pretty darn close. Pretty darn close. So how do you know if you're right? I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to plug this stuff back in. And if I believe that the standard deviation is now equal to 97.56, then what should work is that 800 is equal to the mean of a thousand plus a negative two point zero five which was our z-score times ninety seven dollars and fifty six cents so I end up with eight hundred dollars equals 1,000. This becomes a negative $200. And through the magic of technology and a really good calculator, I know that I'm right because it equals out to the same thing on both sides of the equation. I get a big happy face, and I will see you guys in the next video.